Hello YouTube, it's Supernova, back with more Falcon 4 BMS. Today we're looking at the ramp start procedure, ground operations and takeoff. Anti-collision off. Position steady. Wing tail and fuselage bright. As the aircraft is stationary, the position light is set to steady. Wing tail and fuselage turns the position lights on with a bright setting or off. The dim setting is not implemented. Master light, normal. Note that the aircraft lights will only come on when the main generator comes online during engine start. Alt flaps, normal. In normal operation the trailing edge flaps are controlled automatically by the FLCS. They can be extended manually by setting the switch to Extend. Manual TF Flyup Enable. Use this switch to enable or disable flyup protection in manual terrain following or manual TF mode. Leading edge flaps auto. In the automatic position the leading edge flaps are controlled by the FLCS. In the locked position they are locked in their current state. When locked the FLCS warning light illuminates and the pilot faultless display or PFLD reports an FLCS LEF lock warning message. CNI backup. The upfront controller or UFC requires main generator power and is therefore not available at ramp start. To provide alternate operation of the UHF, TACAN and IFF, the communications navigation IFF or CNI knob is set to backup. Fuel master, master, guard down. In normal conditions this switch is not operated by the pilot. In the off position the fuel shutoff valve is closed and fuel is prevented from reaching the engine. Engine feed, normal. This knob controls how fuel is pumped to the engine from the forward and aft fuel tanks. When in the normal position all pumps are on and center of gravity or CG is maintained automatically. In the forward position fuel is transferred from the forward fuel tank and the CG moves back. While in the aft position fuel is transferred from the aft tank and the CG moves forward. In the off position all pumps are off and fuel is transferred by gravity feed. Which may lead to engine flame out during heavy maneuvering or in negative G situations. Main power, battery. Before starting the engine this switch is placed in the battery position to check the aircraft battery. The FLCS relay is closed, allowing testing of power output to the FLCC with the battery providing power. The electrical systems, main generator, standby generator and FLCS relay lights illuminate. The FLCS relay light illuminates because the FLCS relay is open. The FLCS permanent magnet generator or PMG light does not illuminate as it requires FLCS power. And the aircraft battery to FLCS light also does not illuminate as the FLCS relays are open.
FLCS power test, test. In the test position the FLCS relays close but do not latch. The FLCS PMG and aircraft battery to FLCS lights illuminate and the FLCS relay light goes off. The FLCS power lights on the test switch panel illuminate to indicate correct FLCC power output. FLCS power test normal. AVTR power off. This powers the Air Combat Maneuvering Instrumentation or ACMI. ACMI tapes can be reviewed after the flight. The green AVTR indicator light illuminates when the ACMI is recording. Radios as desired. COM1 power, rotate clockwise. COM1 mode, squelch. COM2 power, rotate clockwise. COM2 mode, squelch. When rotated past the on position, the power knobs increase volume for the UHF and VHF radios respectively. The mode knobs have three positions. In off, squelch mode, though not implemented in BMS, is disabled. Squelch mode is used to reduce background noise. And ground mode tunes the main receiver and transmitter to the guard frequencies, which are UHF or Uniform 243.0 and VHF or Victor 121.5. UHF is normally used to contact ground, tower, approach and departure etc. While VHF is used to communicate between aircraft. Missile volume as desired. This sets the Sidewinder missile acquisition sound level. Threat volume as desired. This is used to set the volume of the threat warning system or TWS. Intercom volume, as desired. All sounds normally heard through the pilot's headsets are dependent on intercom volume level. ILS, as desired. ILS audio volume is not implemented in BMS, so this knob serves only to power ILS symbology when turned clockwise. Function, both. Frequency, as desired. This panel controls the backup UHF radio. There is no backup VHF radio. The backup radio is active when CNI is in the backup position. The left mode knob has three supported positions in BMS, off, main and both. When in the off position, the backup UHF radio is not powered. In the main position it operates on the selected preset channel, or in manual mode, as long as COM1 power is on. And when set to both, the radio functions similarly to main, but it can also receive transmissions on the UHF guard frequency. The right mode knob has three positions. In the manual position the frequency is set using the five rotating knobs. While in the preset position the frequency used is defined by the channel knob, which sets the two digit channel frequency. And in the guard position the main receiver and transmitter are automatically tuned to the UHF guard frequency. Symbology power, off. When rotated clockwise, the first stage of the symbology knob turns the helmet-mounted queuing system 
or HMCS, on, and turning it further increases its intensity. Stores config as required. Set CAT 1 or 3 according to the aircraft loadout. If the stores config caution panel light is illuminated, the position is not set correctly. Landing taxi lights, down. Note that in a real aircraft this is a free function switch, with the centre position off, the up position landing lights on, and the down position taxi lights on. However, in BMS it has only two positions, up for lights on, and down for lights off. Landing gear handle, down. Ground jettison enable, off. This switch is used to enable jettisoning of stores while on the ground. Emergency stores jettison, cover intact. When pressed for more than one second, all air to ground stores and external fuel tanks are jettisoned. Hook up. The two position toggle switch operates the emergency arrestment system. While this is implemented in BMS, it requires available airbase arrestment gear. Roll attitude hold. When in the attitude hold position, the autopilot maintains current roll attitude by INS. In the steering select position, the autopilot directs the aircraft to the active steer point. Note that the roll switch is functional only when the pitch switch is engaged in the altitude hold or attitude hold. Pitch AP off. This is the master autopilot switch. In the off position, neither autopilot pitch or roll are active. In the altitude hold position, the autopilot will attempt to hold the current altitude, while in the attitude hold position, the autopilot will maintain current aircraft pitch. Master arm off. This is a free position switch and places weapons in armed, simulation or off states. Laser arm off. This switch enables the targeting pod laser which can then be fired depending on the settings in the laser DED page. Radio frequency normal. The RF switch is a free position toggle and controls electromagnetic emissions from the aircraft. In the normal position the applicable aircraft systems operate normally, while in the quiet position the radar is put into standby mode to reduce emissions. And in the silent position all emissions from the radar, terrain following radar, radar altimeter, and electronic countermeasures are shut down. Voice message, voice message. This toggle switch is used to control the voice messaging system. In the inhibit position, Bitchin Betty will be muted. HUD control panel set. There are eight switches on this panel and we'll check them in sequence, left to right and top to bottom. The first switch refers to the vertical velocity scale and is a free position switch. In the VV, VAH position, vertical velocity, velocity, altitude and heading are displayed on the HUD. Vertical velocity is displayed inboard of the altitude tape and is marked at 500 feet intervals with a carrot indicating the velocity vector. A roll indicator is displayed above the flight path marker or FPM. In the VAH position the HUD displays velocity, altitude and heading information only, while in the OFF position the HUD scales and heading are not displayed. The second switch refers to the pitch ladder and flight path marker. In the ATT FPM position the pitch ladder and flight marker are displayed while in the FPM position only the flight path marker is displayed, and in the OFF position neither are displayed. The third switch controls inclusion of DED or PFL data at the bottom of the hood as display repeaters. In the DED data position the DED is displayed, while in the PFL position the pilot fault list is displayed, and in the OFF position neither are displayed. The fourth position is a free position switch, used for standby bombing mode. The fifth switch is used to control the speed tape display. In the CAS position, calibrated airspeed is displayed. In the TAS position, true airspeed is displayed. 
Taz's calibrated airspeed corrected for pressure altitude. In the ground speed position, the speed tape displays ground speed, which is true airspeed when corrected. In this mode, a carrot is also displayed on the heading tape to indicate that the system is now showing heading as wind corrected ground track rather than a magnetic track. Note that whenever the landing gear is lowered, HUD airspeed uses calibrated airspeed regardless of switch position. The sixth switch controls the altitude scale. In the alt radar position, radar altitude is indicated. In the barrel position, barometric altitude is displayed. And in the auto position, the altitude scale indicates barometric altitude over 1,500 feet and radar altitude below 1,500 feet. The next switch controls HUD and HMCS brightness, with day, auto and night settings. For the day setting, brightness will be set to a range from no visual perception to full intensity. For the night setting, the brightness ranges from no visual perception to one twentieth of full intensity. And for the auto setting, an automatic brightness control or ABC sensor will be used to try to maintain a pilot selected potentiometer setting. The ABC adjusts the brightness of the symbology depending on the ambient light intensity. The range of the auto setting is 1 100th of full intensity to full intensity. If the ABC sensor fails and the brightness switch is set to auto, brightness will default to the day setting. The last switch is not implemented in BMS. Interior lighting as desired. The primary instrument panel knob controls instrument backlighting. The flood consoles knob controls the cockpit floodlights. And the data entry display knob controls DED brightness. Each knob has three positions, off, dim and bright. Air source, normal. We're looking towards the air conditioning panel. You can find the air source knob hotspot without looking directly at it. Or you can view the control using the 2D view, accessed with the 2 key, and looking to the right and down with the view controls, which by default are the shifted numeric keypad keys 6 and 2. In the off position, the engine bleed air valves are closed and all air conditioning, cooling and pressurising functions are unavailable. Note that fuel transfer from external tanks is therefore not possible. In the normal position, the air conditioning system is in normal operation and provides automatic temperature and pressure regulation. In the dump position, cabin pressurisation ceases and the cockpit vents to external air pressure. Cockpit pressure will therefore increase above 8,000 feet mean sea level, or MSL. The cabin pressure caution light illuminates if altitude exceeds 27,000 feet. Fuel tank pressurisation and the other ECS functions are not affected. And in the ram position, the engine bleed valves are closed and the cockpit vents to external air pressure. Ram air valves are opened and ventilate the cockpit and avionics. External fuel tank pressurisation, cooling, and the other ECS functions are disabled. Main power, main power. With main power enabled, the generator is armed. Canopy closed. At this point wheel chocks are in place, a fire guard has been posted and intake and other danger areas are clear of ground crew. JFS Start 2 The Jet Fuel Starter, or GFS, is an independent gas turbine started by two GFS brake accumulators, charged automatically by Hydraulic System B. Normally one is sufficient, 
but currently only the start to position is supported in BMS. When placed in the start to position the GFS spools up and the engine turbine shaft is driven to 20 to 25% RPM. The GFS run light illuminates. The SEC caution light should go off when RPM reaches approximately 20%. With the SEC caution extinguished, throttle can be advanced. Throttle, advanced to idle at 20% RPM minimum. A throttle with an idle detent should be advanced out of the idle detent position. Otherwise the throttle should be advanced to approximately 50% power and ALT I pressed. It may be necessary to return the throttle to idle and advance it to 50% power if RPM does not increase. RPM should now continue to rise. Check that the FLCS PMG light goes off at around 40 to 45 percent RPM. GFS switch. Confirm off at around 55 percent RPM. At around 55 percent RPM, the engine can spool up alone. The GFS is shut down, and the main generator comes online, and the battery is taken off the bus. The engine and standby generator caution lights go off at around 60% RPM. Check that the standby generator light is off. The main generator light will go out about 10 seconds later. The hydraulic and oil pressure caution light will also go off between 15 and 70% RPM. Set the throttle to idle and perform an instrument check. Fuel flow, 700 to 1,700. Oil pressure, minimum 15 psi. Nozzle position, greater than 94%. RPM, 65 to 77%. Fan turbine inlet temperature, 650C or less. Hydraulic pressure A and B, 2,850 to 3,250 psi. At the 12 o'clock position. Note that the hydraulic system is a dual redundant system, identified as A and B. Both A and B serve critical systems, which will therefore only fail if both A and B lose pressure. Now that the main generator is online, all systems are receiving power, which means that systems previously set should come online, and we can continue to power further systems. Module emission computer on. Store stations on. Multifunction displays on. Upfront controls on. Global positioning system on. Data link on. Note that powering the GPS ensures a correct INS alignment. Inertial navigation system normal. Placing this knob in the normal position starts a normal alignment. Provided the GPS is powered, the INS will be in a usable state after 90 seconds, at which point a steady ready indication is displayed on the hood and DED. These visual cues are important when performing a short ramp start procedure. 
Full alignment is completed after approximately 8 minutes. In aircraft equipped with an embedded GPS INS or EGI, alignment is typically complete in under 5 minutes. Left hard point, as required. Right hard point, as required. The left and right hard point pylons carry external pods, sniper, lantern and HTS, which require power from the aircraft. And therefore these switches should be in the powered position as required. Fire control radar on. This switch powers the FCR. When in the powered position, the FCR enters a power-on built-in test mode, which is visible on the MFD. The bit takes approximately 3 minutes to complete, at which point it is set to standby, unless it was previously set to a specific mode. This test is required for the FCR to function correctly. Radar altimeter, standby. The radar altimeter is placed in standby mode while on the ground for the safety of the ground crew. The data entry display defaults to the INS page. Check that the INS has started to align. The yellow AUX flag on the ADI disappears 60 seconds after alignment has started. HUD as desired. Use the thumb wheel labelled Symbology to first power the hood, and then to adjust its brightness. Press the Fault Acknowledgement button and review the PFLD. Note that the PFLD will display certain faults during startup, which will clear as systems come online. And dismiss the master caution light. It's important to properly review caution lights when the master caution light illuminates and to dismiss it only after reviewing and understanding faults. MFL clear. To view the maintenance fault list or MFL, press OSB14 to view the test page and press OSB3 to clear the list. CNI knob, upfront controller. The primary onboard systems are now available. Avionics, program as required and verify. We now set the avionics as required through the data cartridge or DTC. The DTC contains information created during mission planning. In the real jet, a pilot places the cartridge into the DTC receptacle, located on the right console. However, in BMS we load the DTC through the MFD DTE page. To load the DTC, press the highlighted FCR option, OSB14, OSB8 to view the DTE page, and press OSB3 to load data from the cartridge. MFDs as desired. The UHF and VHF radios can be set through the DTC preset, but it's important to verify correct operation at ramp start. The radios can be set through the COM1 and COM2 ICP buttons. UHF radio as desired. To set the UHF frequency, press COM1 on the ICP Input the Kunsan tower frequency as 2923 with the ICP numeric keys or enter 15 to select preset 15 if the preset has been set during briefing and press ICP enter.
The DED returns to the CNI page, which lists the UHF frequency entered. VHF radio as desired. To set the VHF frequency, press COM2 on the ICP, input 1 with the ICP numeric keys to set it to preset 1, and press ICP enter. Verify the UHF and VHF frequencies on the CNI page. Fire and overheat detect, test. This button checks continuity for the engine overheat and fire detection systems. In the overheat state, the overheat caution light illuminates. While fire detection illuminates the engine fire eyebrow light. Overheat detection occurs 100C before fire detection. Those lights and the master caution light remain illuminated while the button is pressed. Fire and overheat detect, release test. Malfunction and indicator lights, test. This tests the illumination of all warning, caution and indicator lights, the warning horn and all voice messages in sequence. Check the intercom knob if no sounds are heard. Probe heat, test. Probe heat is not fully implemented in BMS, and while it should be turned on in flight, it's not mandatory. The system can be tested when in the test position. Check that probe heat flashes on the caution panel. Probe heat off. This setting de-energizes PITO, fuselage air data, AOA and the total temperature probe heaters. Note that while on the ground, regardless of the test panel switch position, these systems are on when the aircraft is airborne. Before proceeding with the FLCS test, cycle the stick and rudder to help warm the hydraulic fluid and remove air from the system. FLCS bit, initiate and monitor. The green run light illuminates and flight controls are tested in sequence. During the test, FLCS bit warn will be displayed on the hood and the takeoff landing config warning light may also flash. When the self-test is complete, the switch will return to its original position and the run light will go off. If the amber fail light illuminates, the test has failed and the test should be repeated. FLCS bit status is displayed on the FLCS MFD page. Note that the FLCS bit can only be initiated if weight is on the wheels and ground speed is below 28 knots. Once FLCS tests are complete, ensure all switches are in the down position on the flight control panel. Digital backup, as desired. As this aircraft is a Block 15, it doesn't have a digital FLCS. For other blocks, set the digital backup switch to the digital backup position and check that DBU has illuminated on the right eyebrow. The HUD warning message will be displayed and the FLCS page on the MFD will display DBU. Move the flight controls and verify correct operation visually. Check that no FLCS lights illuminate, then to end the test return the digital backup switch to the off position. With all FLCS tests complete, verify that all switches on this panel are in the down position. Trim Autopilot Disconnect, Disconnect. In the disconnected position, stick trim and autopilot are inhibited, though the manual trim panel can still be used to trim the aircraft. 
check that stick trim does not cause flight control movement or the relevant trim needles to move. Trim autopilot disconnect normal. In the normal position, stick trim is energized and the autopilot is operable. In this state, apply stick trim to check correct trim operation. Roll, yaw and pitch trim, center. It's important to verify that all needles are centered. Air refuel, open. With the air refueling door open, the aircraft is ready for air to air refueling. Check that the blue ready light is illuminated on the right indexer. Press the disconnect button on the side stick. Pressing the disconnect button disconnects the aircraft from the refueling boom. Check that the blue ready light is turned off and that the amber disconnect light is illuminated. After 3 seconds the disconnect light will turn off and the ready light should return. Air refuel close. The ready light should turn off. We'll now begin testing the EPU. The EPU provides emergency hydraulic pressure to system A and emergency electrical power to the emergency buses. It is automatically activated when both the main and standby generators fail or when hydraulic pressure falls below 1000 PSI. To maintain operating speed, the EPU uses engine bleed air. If that is not sufficient, hydrazine is used as a booster. The green EPU run light illuminates when the EPU turbine is within the proper range and EPU hydraulic pressure is above 2000 PSI. The yellow air light illuminates when the EPU is running on engine bleed air. Engine RPM should be maintained between 82 and 90% to prevent use of hydrazine. The yellow hydrazine light illuminates when hydrazine is being used to boost engine bleed air. Note that hydrazine is limited and is exhausted after approximately 10 minutes in normal use. As a consequence, if hydrazine is being used, it's important to land the aircraft within that time. EPU off. EPU normal. Check that the EPU gen and EPU PMG lights are off. With the aircraft on wheel chocks and tow brakes and not the parking brake, increase throttle to 80%. EPU gen, press and hold. Then check the following lights. For FLCS power lights on. EPU air lights on. EPU gen and EPU PMG lights off. EPU run light illuminates after 5 seconds. If the light fails to illuminate, restart the test with a higher throttle setting. EPU gen release. Return throttle to idle. ECM operational. This is the only control on this panel that is implemented in BMS. In this position, any ECM pod carried is powered. We will now test secondary control mode. 
SEC mode may be invoked automatically in the event of engine damage or malfunction. First, apply tow brakes. Engine cont, secondary. Master caution and the SEC caution light illuminate. The engine nozzle closes and the nozzle position indicator should report less than 5%, with 0% being completely closed. Verify smooth RPM operation in SEC mode, noting that RPM may be lower in this mode. Engine cont, primary. Master caution and the SEC caution light turn off. Nozzle position increases to more than 94%, with 100% being completely open. Return throttle to idle and release the tow brakes. We're now going to test speed brake operation by opening it with the thumb activated slide switch located on the throttle. Toggle the speed brake position between open and closed with the B key. Speed brake open. To the left of the landing gear control panel is a three position speed brake indicator. Positions are closed, while a nine dot symbol indicates that the speed brake is not closed though it's not possible to determine the stage of opening. And diagonal lines suggest that electrical power is not being received by the indicator. Note that it takes two seconds to open the speed brake and six seconds to close it. Speed brake closed. Threat warning, power. The green indicator illuminates when the electronic warfare system or EWS suite is powered. The search button enables an S symbol to be displayed on the radar warning receiver or RWR when the EWS is powered and detects a search radar before its acquisition symbol will be displayed. If search is not enabled, the green S indicator on the TWA will blink at 4 Hz whenever the EWS detects a search radar painting the aircraft. The activity power button is not interactive. Power illuminates whenever the EWS suite is powered, and activity illuminates if the EWS is powered and detects a search radar painting the aircraft. The altitude button toggles between high and low altitude threat biasing categorizing the SAM threat according to lethality at low or high altitude. High altitude biasing is the default whenever the EWS suite is powered on. CMDS as desired. The countermeasures dispenser system panel forms part of the EWS suite and controls countermeasure management. The radar warning receiver and jammer toggle switches control automatic dispensing of chaff and flares. The RWR switch must be in the on position for the semi and auto modes to function. The jammer switch must be in the on position for coordinated release of countermeasures in combination with use of the jammer pod. Four categories of expendables are listed though only chaff and flares are implemented. In the on position, the indicator displays the number of expendables remaining. Bingo level can be set through the DTC or UFC, and when this is reached, LO is displayed with the number remaining. The indicator remains blank in the off position. Four pre-programmed countermeasure sequences can be selected with the program knob. The selected program is activated when CMSUP is pressed, which is alt home by default. 
A further two programs are also available. All six can be programmed through the DTC or the UFC when CMDS is in standby mode. Program 5 is activated by the slap switch on the left sidewall, which is S by default. And program 6 is activated with CMS left, which is Alt Delete by default. The bit position is not implemented. The mode knob selects the CMDS operating mode. In the off position the CMDS is not powered and countermeasures cannot be released. In the standby position programs can be changed through the UFC but countermeasures cannot be released. In the manual position programs 1 to 5 can be manually released using the CMS. The program selected with the program knob can be activated with CMS up and program 5 with the slap switch. In the semi position, the EWS will issue a counter prompt through the VMS when it feels use of countermeasures is appropriate. Consent is then given with CMS back, at which point the selected program will be released once. Note that the RWR switch on the CMDS panel must be set to on for semi mode to work. In the auto position, consent is given once through CMS down until cancelled with CMS right, which is Alt end by default. In the bypass position, one shaft and one flare are released with each CMS up command. Note that bypass is a manual mode, and that no semi or auto functions are available in this mode. With the ECM switch in the operational position, the Go status indicator should illuminate, indicating that all systems are ready to be deployed. TWP run bit. Press the Sys test button and check the indications on the RWR display which are relevant to the ALR56 RWR. Then to check the missile launch and audio notifications, press the missile launch button. When satisfied the system is operating correctly, press the handoff button briefly to set the RWR to diamond float mode. In the diamond float mode, the diamond floats to the highest priority symbol, and sound for that emitter is heard continuously. ALO as required. To view the ALO page, press ICP2. The Altitude Low page is used to define values for the Altitude Advisory System. The number at the top right is the active steer point, which can be changed with ICP Previous and ICP Next. Coral Low is mainly used to provide a low altitude warning. The value input is also displayed on the hood to the right of the letters AL. This flashes when altitude is below CARA ALO. With the DCS, move the asterisks to minimum safe level or MSL floor. Then enter the transition altitude in Korea, which is 14,000 feet, with the ICP numeric buttons and press enter. An altitude altitude warning when descending through 14,000 feet will then prompt an altimeter update with the local QNH setting. Double left to return to the CNI page. TILS as desired. Use this page to input TACAN and ILS settings. To view the TILS page, press ICP1. The system can differentiate between TACAN and ILS formats. To enter the TACAN frequency, input it with the ICP numeric buttons and press enter. Note the band to the bottom left. An X indicates a ground TACAN, while Y indicates an airborne TACAN. To toggle the band, input 0 and press enter. To change the TACAN from TR, ground domain, to AATR, air domain, Use the DCS SEQ button.
To enter an ILS frequency, input the desired frequency, for example 110.3 for Kunsan Runway 36, and press Enter. And to enter the ILS course heading or localizer, dobber down with DCS to move the scratch pad to the course line and input the course heading. Note ILS on at the top right. If the ILS knob on the Audio 2 panel is turned to the off position, ILS off will be displayed, and ILS will not be available. Bingo, as required. To view the bingo page, press ICP list, then ICP2. VMS will call bingo at the Joker or bingo fuel state. Bingo is the minimum fuel state at which the mission should be terminated. Joker is a fuel state sometimes used as a notification that fuel state is approaching bingo. The second line indicates total fuel remaining. Fuel quantity select, normal. This knob controls the fuel quantity displayed on the fuel quantity gauge on the right auxiliary console. In the test position, the aft right and forward right needles each point to 2000, while the totalizer displays 6000, and the fuel low caution lights illuminate on a caution panel. In the normal position, the aft left needle displays the fuel quantity in the aft left reservoir and A1 fuselage tanks while the forward right needle displays the fuel quantity in the forward right reservoir and F1 and F2 fuselage tanks. The totalizer displays the total fuel amount available. The automatic forward fuel transfer system, trapped fuel warning and bingo fuel computation are only enabled in the normal position. In the reservoir position, the aft left and forward right needles indicate fuel quantity in the aft and forward reservoir tanks, while the totalizer displays total fuel. In the internal wing position, the aft left needle displays fuel remaining in the left internal wing tank, while forward right displays fuel remaining in the right internal wing tank, with the totalizer displaying total fuel on the aircraft. Note that fuel from the internal wing tanks feeds into the fuselage tanks, therefore as long as the fuselage tanks remain full, CG is not affected. In the external wing position, the aft left needle indicates fuel in the left external tank and the forward right needle fuel quantity in the right external tank. The totalizer displays the total amount of fuel carried. And in the external center position, the aft left needle points to zero, while the forward right needle displays the quantity of fuel in the center external tank, while the totalizer indicates total fuel on board. External fuel transfer, normal. In the normal position, fuel is transferred from the center line external tank first while in the wing first position fuel will first be transferred to the external wing tanks. Press the fault acknowledgement button, then check the master caution light. Check the PFLD for any remaining faults. Check the warning light panel. If an EPU fuel gauge is present in the aircraft, check that hydrazine remaining is between 95 to 102%. To indicate INS alignment is complete, ready flashes on the DED and align flashes on the hood. Inertial navigation system, NAV. The INS will now provide navigation information to the aircraft's navigation system, and all navigation cues will be displayed. To request Q&H, or the atmospheric pressure at sea level, open the tower menu with the T key, press it again, and select 1, request Q&H. 
Goblin, two, Gunas on approach, two, nine, eight, four. Altimeter and altitude indications set and check. To enter QNH, rotate the altimeter knob at the bottom left. The needle ranges from 0 to 1000 feet and the drum number the altitude rounded to the nearest 100 feet. To request wind direction and the active runway, open the second page of the tower menu as previously described and select option 4 and option 6. Goblin, 2-1, Gunas on approach, 3-2-0 at 1-3 knots. Bulldog, 1-2, Kunas on tower, resume on navigation. Goblin, 2-1, Gunas on approach, runway 36 for takeoff. Now that we know which runway is being used for departures, we can plan our route to the holding position. Under Airport Approach and Navigation Charts, look up Kunsan Spawn Diagram. As runway 36 is active, we know we are currently located in the blast revetments of Wolfpack Flows, which line taxiway Papa. If we then look at the Kunsan Airport diagram, we know that to reach the holding position of runway 36, we turn left onto Papa, then turn right at Alpha, arriving at end of runway or EOR South, which is the holding point for runway 36. To request permission to taxi from the control tower, press T, then select menu option 5. Taxi, runway 36. Hold short. Anti collision on. Position flash. Wingtail and fuselage bright. From the ICP list page, Press ICP6 to display the INS page. At the bottom right is the aircraft's ground speed. Note that this is the only indicator of ground speed available. Taxi on. Brakes and NWS check. To set nose wheel steering, which allows steering the aircraft using the rudder, press shift forward slash. Check that the green NWS light in the centre of the indexer has illuminated. Ejection safety lever, arm. Apply tow brakes or set parking brakes. Chocks, remove. To remove the chocks, call up the tower menu with a T key, then press 8, remove chocks. When ready to taxi, release tow brakes or parking brakes as applicable, and the aircraft should start to roll under idle power, depending on loadout. As a single aircraft, we follow the yellow line. While in multi-ship instances, lead may instruct a scattered sequence, in which case aircraft taxi on opposite sides of the taxiway centre line. Maximum ground speed is followed, which generally should not exceed 25 knots, turning at 10 knots maximum. Bulldog 1-1, one, one. Gunasan Tower, you're cleared for takeoff, runway 36.
As a single aircraft arriving at TRW South, any parking spot can be selected. When part of a larger flight, the parking spot is defined by your position in the flight. Bulldog, one, two, Gunnison Tower, resume all navigation. When stopped in a parking spot, set the parking brake. As the aircraft is stationary, set the position light to steady. Double left to return to the CNI page, then press ICP4 to view the steer point page. The active steer point is steer point 1, which is placed on the runway. Note the designated time over steer point, or TOS, for the currently active steer point. We will complete any outstanding tasks 30 seconds to 2 minutes before that time, and then start to taxi into a hold short position, or directly onto the runway if takeoff clearance is granted. We will use that time to set the improved data modem. This connects you to your flight members or package members, depending on your settings. The IDM is set through the UFC data link page. To view the D-Link page, press the ICP list button and press the ICP enter button. The first page displays your flight IDM address, which is 10, and your own ship IDM address which is 11. Use DCS right or Dobber right to select the second IDM page. On the left of this page you would input the IDM address of each member of your flight and to the right the IDM address of members of other flights. With this information entered you will receive sensor information from these IDM addresses according to the status of your IDM. You may test the IDM by pressing and holding the throttle comm switch to the left for more than half a second. The position of IDM addresses entered should then become visible on your HSD momentarily. The system can then be used as required. With TOS approaching, set the position light to flash. Turn off the parking brake or advance the throttle briefly above 83% RPM for it to disconnect automatically and begin moving towards the runway. Goblin 2 1, Gunnison Tower, you're cleared for takeoff, runway 36. As a single aircraft line up on the runway centre line using the runway magnetic heading, which can be found on the airport diagram, which in this case is 356, and hold the aircraft in position with the tow brakes. Make a final check of engine gauges, caution and warning lights, and verify aircraft heading. Disengage NWS if correctly aligned on the runway. Radar altimeter. Radar Alt.
it's important to know your aircraft's rotation speed. This is the speed at which you will gently pull back on the stick to take off. The gross weight of the loaded aircraft defines its rotation speed. In this example, gross weight is 24,000 pounds. We know that from the aircraft loadout screen. Use the external weapon delivery planner tool to define rotate speed. In this configuration, rotate speed is 127 knots. With brakes engaged, add power to 90% RPM. Check gauges for proper operation. Release brakes and advance throttle to full military power, known as buster or mill. Then engage afterburner. NWS must be disengaged before reaching 80 knots. As airflow on the rudder increases, rudder authority also increases, allowing effective use of the rudder to compensate for crosswinds. At rotation speed, gently pull back on the stick to place the gun cross on the positive 10 degree pitch line. Do not exceed 14 degrees of pitch to avoid scraping the nozzle on the runway. With a positive rate of climb, raise the landing gear with the G key. The red lollipop light illuminates to indicate gear is in transit. If the lollipop light does not extinguish, a gear malfunction is indicated. Landing gear must be raised before airspeed reaches 305 knots. Disengage the afterburner once airspeed reaches 350 knots. Adjust climb angle to maintain 350 knots. When altitude reaches 5000 feet, level out on the runway heading and reduce throttle to maintain 350 knots. I hope you enjoyed that look at ramp start, ground operations and takeoff. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you again for the next Falcon 4 BMS video.